Hello everyone, welcome to MESS e-learning channel. In this lecture today, we'll cover a topic called equilibrium in coplanar force system. So what is the state of equilibrium in an object? So if we say that this object is in equilibrium, that means that this object is stable in its own position. That is, this position may be the condition of rest or can be a condition of uniform motion. So if the object is in equilibrium, if it is under rest, it will remain, continue to be in rest and if it is under uh, uniform motion, it will continue to be in the mo uniform motion. So let us consider an example for this. So let's say I have an object which is placed on a flat surface and there are various forces that are acting on this object. Let's say this is F1, F2, F3, F4 and let's say F5 and F6. There are various forces those are acting on this object. Now due to this force, what may happen is this object may get displaced from its original position of rest or on uniform motion, whatever it is. So this is my block which may get displaced after all these forces are acting on it. It may move for forward or it may move backward any which ways. So this force if I convert in this system if I convert it into a equilib e I mean not equilibrium for system but a equivalent system then it would be all the all these forces acting on this block would be now converted into a single force which we know that we call it as a resultant force. So let us assume that the net effect of all the forces that is the resultant force is in this direction in the positive upward direction at an angle of theta with x axis. We are just assuming that the resultant of all these forces is going upward at an angle of theta with the x axis. So now what happens is because of this resultant force, this block may move forward if it is under rest or if it is under uniform motion, it may, the velocity may change. But now the original state which the object was in before the application of all this resultant forces or all these forces, that may get displaced because of which the object will be unbalanced. So we don't want the object or any which uh, any object in the space which is kept to be unbalanced. So what we do is we apply an equal and opposite force to the resultant. Let us say I apply this force at, and the angle would be same as that of theta and it is in directly in the opposite direction to the resultant force and this force we call it as a equilibrant force. So let us, it is called it as an equilibrant force. I have denoted this equilibrant force with a capital E. So now this force, what this force will do? This will cancel out all the effect of the resultant force. Because they are in opposite direction and same magnitude, they will cancel each other out and the net effect on the object now would be zero which is why the, un, the object which was about to get unbalanced will be now balanced because of this equilibrant force. Now this equilibrant force have some few characteristics that this should be of equal magnitude and opposite in direction and it should be in the same angle as that of the resultant force directly opposite to the resultant force and it will maintain the condition of rest or the state of rest or of uniform motion that is the original condition of the object which was in. So this is how we balance out our forces but now from this situation we get few conditions of equilibrium like if we say that this object is in equilibrium then we come out to a conclusion of about what conditions should be satisfied for a system to be in equilibrium. Now what I said is this net effect of the forces becomes zero that is the resultant would become zero which is why the conditions of equilibrium could be
equilibrium could be summation of f of x would be equal to 0 if we have summation of f of x summation of f of y would be equal to 0 which is why summation of moment also would be equal to 0. Now, these three condition are the condition of equilibrium. So, whenever we are provided with a data that the system is in equilibrium, we can apply all these three conditions. Now, these three conditions are uh, equal to 0 because the resultant here would become 0 if we balance it out with an equilibrium force. Now, there is a principle called principle of transmissibility. So, what is the principle of transmissibility? Let us say I have an object like this and the line of action of this object is here and I apply a force F onto this object and I say that this object is in equilibrium. Now, when this object is in equilibrium, it is under some a particular state that is a state of rest or of uniform motion. So, if I apply this force here onto this object and this force will remain unchanged if I if this is the same block if I draw this force here that is force F now, if you see this force and this force has the same line of action, but here it is giving a push effect and here it is giving a pull effect, but this would remain, this force is the same as of this force because I have just transmitted the force from this position to this position and when we do this, the system will not change its state of equilibrium, that is the state of equilibrium of the system will remain unchanged. Now, as we know what is equilibrium and what are the conditions of equilibrium, let us move on to a part of types of equilibrium. Types of equilibrium. So, there are in total three types of equilibrium. The first one being a stable equilibrium. The second one is unstable equilibrium and the third one is a neutral equilibrium. Now, the first one the stable equilibrium. So, for stable equilibrium, what is the condition? Let us consider that I have okay, let us consider I have a surface and I have a cylinder kept on this surface. Now Initially, the, the cis cylinder kept on this surface is in a state of equilibrium, that is that too in a state of static equilibrium, let us consider. So, if I apply a force on this object, that is the ini initial force F is set up on this cylinder. Now, for inst if this object is in stable equilibrium, what will happen? This will move forward to a further to a certain dis, with a certain displacement and then come back to its original position that is in stable equilibrium if the object is in stable equilibrium it will always regain its original position after a initial force or a external force is set up on it this is a stable equilibrium now for unstable equilibrium if i have let's say a surface and a cylinder is kept on it. Now, initially this object also is in a static equilibrium. So, now if this object is in unstable equilibrium, what happens? If an initial force F is set up on this, it will change its position and move on to a certain displacement 
and be unstable in that position too. So, here it will never regain its original position and which is why this is an unstable equilibrium where when a, a, when a force or external force is set up onto the object, it will move from the initial position and never come back to its original position. Now, the third one being a neutral equilibrium. So, let us consider this surface and the same cylinder and for this condition also we will say that this is under static equilibrium and I will apply an in initial external force F onto it now. After it is in static equilibrium, we apply a force F onto it because of which it will displace from its original position, come to some other position, I mean acquire some uh, other position and be stable in that new position itself. So, what happens in neutral equilibrium is whenever an object is in static, initially the object is in static equilibrium, we set up a force, external force onto it, it will displace from its original position, go, go to some other position or have some displacement and now it will remain stable or it will remain in equilibrium in that new position itself. So, this is all about equilibrium. In the next lecture, we will study what is a free body diagram and why it is necessary. Hope you understood. Thank you.